Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Uh, press events uh, on the real entertainment for this issue for more than several weeks now. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to get right to it. I'm going to bring up uh, Kentucky Alliance co-chair Tyra Walker, and she's going to have, make a statement on uh, this situation and introduce some public folks. Yes. <laughs> Scoot right up to the mics. <laughs> My name is... My name is Tyra Walker, it's T-Y-R-A-W-A-L-K-E-R, -E and I'm going to read a statement from the Kentucky Alliance. I am the co-chair of the Kentucky Alliance Against Racism and Political Repression. I stand here and have been standing here for 100 and plus days because I have black children, I have black nieces and nephews, and I'm standing here to fight for them so that we don't have to renew this ever again. First, the Kentucky Alliance would like to express our condolences to the family of Breonna Taylor. Our hearts are very heavy right now, and we are grieving with the family and for our community. Justice for Breonna Taylor was not served on September 23rd, 2020. Her name was not even mentioned in the announcement. And for 120 plus days, that is all we have been asking everyone all over the world to do is to say her name. Breonna Taylor. All we want is transparency, and we are demanding Daniel Cameron to present the evidence that was presented to the grand jury to the community. We want to know what was presented to the grand jury. We want to know if evidence concerning Breonna Taylor was presented to the grand jury. We want to know if any evidence of bullets going into black residents' homes was presented to the grand jury. We want to know because there were no warrants, there were no warrant, uh, no warrant, excuse me, of endangerment charges for the black residents for Breonna Taylor or for the black residents at the, for the black residents. Sorry, our system has shown its true colors. There is a two-sided system: one for black and brown people, and one for white people. What applies to white people do not apply to black and brown people. This is why we want to change the laws. We have to change the laws. We have to get out and vote because our lives depend on it. As one of the community co-sponsors, we have to stand behind our state rep, Attica Scott, and her Kentucky statewide Breonna Taylor's law, the law that will make change so this will not repeat itself. Again, get out and vote because our lives depend on it. And I am introducing Attica Scott, the author of Breonna Taylor's Law, statewide law. So we all know that Breonna Taylor did not receive justice this week. We know that her family did not receive justice this week. We are disgusted and disappointed, but we are not surprised and we are not deterred. We know that our calling is to continue to fight for justice for Breonna Taylor, and that's why we have continued to be out here every single day this week. Our community deserves justice. Our community deserves to know that black lives truly do matter. And my daughter and I, my teenage daughter and I, believe that to our core, to our depths. And that's why on Thursday, as we have been many days, and for me every day this week, we were out making sure that marchers were safe. But what the alphabet soup of law enforcement that's here in Kentucky right now decided to do was box in people who were in vehicles, refused to allow us to leave to get to safety, to sanctuary, to shelter. And that's what happened to us. And so it was before curfew, it was before nine o'clock. So we got out of our vehicle to walk literally three blocks to First Unitarian Church at 4th and York for sanctuary. For those of you who have seen my Instagram live feed, you know, you know that there was no mob. There were about 20 of us walking together to get to the church. 
we were in the district that I served, District 41. We walked past the library that I love. In elementary school, my son helped to start a book club at the main library. I have fought every single budget year in Frankfurt for full funding for our libraries. How dare LMPD say that I was trying to burn down our library? Right. Absurd, give me a break. Right. Come up yeah. with some better lies. Yes. Mm. 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 And then to have the library found, the library union, without hesitation, without reservation, come out with the statement and say, please give me a break. State Representative Attica Scott has been one of our largest advocates and supporters. She would never. And then to have your mayor double down and try to claim that we were with people who were trying to burn down the library and we should have separated ourselves. Y'all need to ask him what in the world is he thinking? Stop letting him and LMPD say whatever they want to say. Ask them, what in the hell are you doing? None of us should have been arrested. None of the hundreds of people who have been arrested this week should have been arrested. But we're being set up. They are setting us up to be arrested. They told us when we were at the library, turn around. And when we tried to turn around, they said, circle them, circle them and then told us to sit down while they pointed their guns in our faces like they were ready to kill us. We had no intentions of being arrested that night. They stopped us at 8.58. It wasn't even nine o'clock and we were literally across the street from the church, across the street from sanctuary. I'm gonna fight every single one of these bogus charges. And I'm gonna keep showing up for justice for Breonna Taylor. That is what she deserves. That's what her family deserves. That's what the community that I serve deserves. And I'm grateful that two of my colleagues are here this morning uh, to share their words of support with you before they come up. I want everyone to know that Louisville is showing up for racial justice. Uh, El Surge is here uh, with voter registration cards because we gotta make sure we get people registered to vote. Every single election in my life has been the most important election of my life, every single year. Now, sometimes white folks should pick and choose what year is the most important election of their lives, but every single one is the most important election of my life. So please get registered to vote. I want to ask uh, State Representative Nima Kulkarni uh, to come up first, if she would, please. Uh, someone who has uh, used her position to call for justice. Representative Kulkarni. for putting your body on the line out here every single day. Um, I'm here in support of you as my colleague in the state legislature. I'm here in support of all of the black women that have been here every single day since we learned how Breonna Taylor died. I'm here to urge everybody in Louisville and everybody in Kentucky that thinks our city is a war zone to come down here and see for yourself. We are peacefully protesting here. Any escalation that I myself have witnessed has been at the hands of law enforcement. Attica Scott was arrested outside a church that she was steps from seeking sanctuary in. Um, I am urging elected officials to come down here. Do not spread misinformation and division. Do not escalate the situation any further. I have a few asks for our elected officials to the governor de-escalate our city take away the federal agents and the National Guard. They are not needed here to rein in peaceful and constitutional protests that are happening every single day. To our mayor, lift this arbitrary curfew. There, it's being used as a pretense by law enforcement to arrest peaceful protesters exercising their constitutional rights. Please, as elected officials, do your job. Do the right thing. Protect the constitutional rights of your people and stop spreading misinformation and division. It is about people over politics. It is about people over property. Please let us come together in support of our fellow Louisvillians and Kentuckians. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Kulkarni. She and Representative Wilner, who are also here, are 11, uh, one of the 11 legislative co-sponsors of Brianna's Law for Kentucky. Um, as you heard from Ms. Tyra Walker, 
we have over 1,500 community co-sponsors of Brianna's Law for Kentucky. Brianna's Law for Kentucky would end no knock warrants across our commonwealth. It would mandate that law enforcement use uh, their body cameras, actually turn them on. We pay too much money for them to be turned off, and we have enough money to buy more if needed. Uh, when they are issuing search warrants, and it would mandate alcohol and drug testing for officers who have been involved in deadly shootings and other violent incidences. Now I want to bring up my colleague, Representative Lisa Wilner. Thank you, Representative Scott. I'm here this morning to stand in solidarity with a grieving community. I'm here this morning to stand in solidarity with my colleague, Representative Attica Scott. I was not anticipating speaking this morning. My heart is very full from what I have witnessed throughout this week. I want to express my gratitude to my congregation, First Unitarian Church, for opening its doors when asked to on a moment's notice for its commitment, for the commitment of our minister, Reverend Lori Kyle, and the volunteers at our church for their commitment to keep the church open as a place of respite, as a place of solace, as a place of sanctuary. I want to express my outrage that my colleague, Representative Scott, was arrested with her daughter, with Shamika Parish Wright, peace-loving, justice-seeking leaders in this community when they were doing nothing other than trying to get themselves and others to safety, when they were working to stand in solidarity with this grieving community. I want to call on the mayor to please lift this curfew. The curfew is being used as an excuse. Our church grounds are being used as a, as a place for standoff with the LMPD night after night after night. There have been some publicized incidents and some less publicized inst incidents. This is a place of peace, just as this square has been a place of peace for all these days. I want to let you know that in addition to being a sponsor, co-sponsor of Brianna's Law for Kentucky, I'm also working with Representative Scott on a bill to demilitarize the police across Kentucky. We're working with uh, with several community partners in this effort. Tomorrow I will be filing a new bill request for us to define rioting so that what happened to Attica Scott, what happened to Ashanti Scott, what happened to Shamika Parish Wright while they were seeking sanctuary cannot happen again. For them to be accused of a felony of rioting is completely outrageous. This bill request will be going in tomorrow. We will be calling this bill Attica's Law out of respect for our colleague. Yeah. And again, thank you to all of you for being here. Thank you for this justice seeking community for showing up day after day after day, night after night after night. I appreciate this community very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Representative Wilner. And she's absolutely correct that um, at a moment's notice, she called on her congregation, First Unitarian Church, to ask them to open their doors for us for sanctuary. And they've done so uh, just about this entire week. So thank you to First Unitarian Church. And I want to turn this back over, I think, to Ms. Tyra Walker. Or, yeah. Mr. Hay. So I'm going to bring up uh, former uh, Chair of Reliance, uh, Robin Mathis, who's going to share with us some of the things that happened to her. Rhonda, who is it? Rhonda. The one in your hand, too. Okay. My name is Rhonda Mathis, uh, community activist, and I was one of the ones who was with Shamika and Attica and the rest who got arrested and we were seeking sanctuary at the church. And I bled at the hands, at the feet of the mayor. He is a liar. He says that he's a for, he is for civil disobedience and that was what we were exercising, our right to have to do civil disobedience. And we were just a step away from the church and the police surrounded us and had us to put our face to the ground and start tying up, tying us up. And it's, it's unfortunate 
that we continue 54 years later when I was involved and we are doing the same thing that it seemed like the wagon is going downhill with civil rights, our rights here in America, our rights here in Louisville, Kentucky. I am so proud of the young people who want transformational change, who are the what democracy look like, and the pastor had them to speak as far as what was hope for them. And they were saying hope for them was coming to down here at Brianna Square as a family and building community. Some of them were homeless. Some of them were still on the verge of suicide. And this has given them hope. Uh, we had medics who were arrested. And uh, one medic who was uh, uh, on her period. And they let her bleed out and was laughing at her. And they had no reason even to lock her up. We had one person who worked with the homeless. And they knew his name. They beat him up over in corrections. So we have Homeland Terrorists with LAPD, and they are totally out of control with the FOP, and they are just doing what the hell they want in our community. And we are tired of saying we tired and that enough is enough. A re resistance will continue to happen in this, this community. We have a president who's a, a comparing himself to Lincoln and that he's the best thing for of blacks. Lincoln did not free, didn't care about freeing the slaves. It was about the union. And we have a president who keeps saying he wants to make America great. He wants to make America white. We live in a border state. We live in a racist state. And they would have us here to be picking cotton again. We get no resources. We're the last on the total pole. Our education is the gateway to our kids to prison. And they asked us, why do we fight back? Because we fight because freedom is what we fight back. We fighting to win. We are tired of being sick and tired. We love and support each other down here. This is a community down here. Today is Sunday. This is a day that God has made. I call on my black clergy. Have your Bible study and your church down here. Jesus is here among us. When the preacher preached at the First Unitarian and having all these feelings coming from these young people and you feel this pain, Brianna was my daughter. They charged something for the white person neighbor, but not for Brianna who took all of those bullets in her sleep. Enough is enough. We are sick and tired. They charged us because they said someone was among us who broke their window out. Well, I say the police are murderers. All of them should be convicted and arrested and prosecuted. AG is nothing but a Clarence Thomas on the short list. They would not let uh, President Obama send anyone, but Mitch McConnell is in a rush to sit someone in that seat. Yes, we sick and tired. We sick and tired of this racism in this country. We help build this country. And we are going to continue to resist. We're going to continue to fight. You have not seen the last. And I'm an elder, and I hope other elders, I know we got this pandemic, but I trust in the Lord. And I'm going to keep on because these are my children down here. And we know that those in power are already, as far as the next 20 years, that's how they plan they got rid of Walnut Street with gentrification. They would say it was urban renewal. No, it was Negro removal. And we continue to have this going on as far as in our community. The West End is desolate. I mean, you go across, I can hardly, I gotta go around in circles. They got us caged up. But you can go last night, they were saying they was partying in the, in the other end of East End in town. This curfew is supposed to be countywide, but we are taking the blood of the of, of the of the of, of this uh, curfew. So, I, uh, so Mer, you are a liar. You are part of the thugs and gangs with LPD and all of those in high office with the vanguards and with the cover up. We charge all of y'all for Brianna's murder. So we're going to continue to be out here. We're going to fight. We fight for our freedom and we fight to win. That's right. Yeah.
like to bring up uh, Kentucky Alliance board member Dana Wooten. Alright, my name is uh, Dana Ayana. Okay, like Dana A I Y A N N A. I am retired. Um, I've got locked up also with uh, Shamika and state representative Attica Scott and longtime local activist Rhonda. Uh, so I'm going to keep this short. Uh, I felt like we was held as a hostage. Um, I went to, obviously, I don't want to get into felony until the next court day. So I was cautious. I went to church early, uh, but they kept us there all night. So I kind of stayed up to 4 a.m. And 17 people were arrested and followed at leaving the church after that because so many people were scared. Uh, never in my life have I imagined that I'll get locked up a few steps away from entering a church. The church is supposed to be the safest place, and many people who are traumatized need a place to heal. I'm asking you all to support the State Representative Attica Scott's Brianna's bill. Many people, I feel like, are being set up. It's no coincidence. They got Shamika uh, with the Bell Project and the Kentucky Alliance. Our only um, black state representative, a longtime local activist, Rhonda, me, an organizer and a volunteer coordinator of this park. Some people won't get felonies off, but some people will. So I'm just begging you all to please get out and vote because many of us who are pitting our bodies on the line might not get to vote. And this is the most important election of our lifetime. Yes. So I'm bringing up uh, hey. 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 Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We are bringing up Andrea Anderson. All right. Um, my name is Andrea Anderson. I'm a park coordinator volunteer. I've been out here for over 120 something days. Um, I do security, different types here in the park. I protect the park and the people in it. That night that they locked the people up at the church, I was there. Uh, we were performing evac, me and another medic. We were trying to get out of an alley. We heard the announcement that we could come back to in Justice Square to get our stuff. I am a tent person right here. I am with Breeway and I came to get my belongings. And as I was on Market Street trying to get here, since we all know we are blocked in, so I could not just drive up. The ride that I got dropped me off at Market. Me and her was walking past a hotel, past a blockade. I got locked up because of the curfew. Even though we were told we can come back here to get my stuff. So at the end of the day, this curfew is really just put out for those of us who are trying to fight the front line, the behind the scenes, the people that are involved with the protest only. I went past U of L last night, they were partying. The liquor store is open, McDonald's is open, Taco Bell is open. People are out in the streets and we are being locked up because we protest. It's not right. The mayor is against us. I've been out here so long, they took my tent when I lived out here, been bulldozed, all of my belongings were taken. I'm out here because of Breonna Taylor. I too could be Breonna Taylor. Nobody pays me a nickel to do this. I protect the people for a reason. The police are not. I saw a need and I try to help fill in a gap. Other people like me are being locked up daily for no reason. No reason. I got locked up with Shamika and Attica and those who got locked up that night. Nobody else knew that I got locked up because I got locked up on Market Street. It's unfair. This needs to stop. I don't dedicate my life to be out here being locked up. I'm not a criminal. I'm not. The things that we are doing is not unlawful. We are out here in the streets trying to get justice. We need justice. That's why we're here. No other reason. And we've been locked up because of it. God forbid that was your child. God forbid that was your daughter. God forbid that would be your family member. God forbid. So I'm saying this to everybody in Louisville. Help protect the people. Yeah!
bringing up Carl Wallace of Louisville showing, showing up for racial justice. All right. All right, Carl. Appreciations, Andrea, really pow powerfully said. On behalf of Louisville showing up for racial justice and national surge, which is over a half a million people, we stand in solidarity with the family of Breonna Taylor and with the community led by black and brown people to create more justice in this city for all of us. What the Attorney General delivered was not the indictment that we needed. It was an indictment of a system that says it's okay to kill a young black woman in her home. The failure of our mayor to fire the officers is an indictment of his claim to compassion and caring for this community. The arrests of Representative Attica Scott, Shamika, Andrea, Rhonda, Dana, Ashanti, and others is a clear effort to intimidate people who are protesting for justice, putting riot charges on people. When the state fails us, when the state murders Breonna Taylor, when the state attacks our leadership, the only avenue is for us to use our feet and our voices, our hearts, our bodies and minds, our spirits to be in the streets and demand justice. That's right. The charges need to be dropped against Representative Scott and others, but they actually need to be dropped against every single person who was arrested. Over 400 people in this community who are using the power that we have, the power of the people, to express the rage and the grief that is so legitimate in this moment. Right. On behalf of Surge, we organize the white people. And we want to say that we need more white people breaking white silence. Because the silence of too many white people is what stands in the way of those in power doing what is needed. They hide behind the white silence and refuse to do what is needed. So to all of us, stand strong and stand together. This struggle is about a better community for every single one of us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bringing up uh, Kentucky Alliance co-chair Tara Walker for a closing statement. <laughs> Keep it held up. I just have two more statements to make. One is we would like for everyone to follow what, Attica Scott on Instagram. It's at Attica Scott, the number four KY, to keep up with the updates on Brianna's Law. And visit Attica Scott, the number four KY.com to become a co sponsor. Uh, and also, we are demanding that Mike O'Connell drop all charges yes. on all protesters. Yes. Again, we are demanding that Mike O'Connell drop all charges on all protesters. That's right. Thank you all for coming. You all have Woo! a great Sunday. Woo! Any questions? Any questions? I'm sorry. Did you comment on the number of uh, white militia that are in town and the fear that uh, the folks who are protesting have as a result of their presence? Uh, I, I don't know the number. But I know there are several that are here. I know that they have been occupying invaders. Or they were one day, I think it was either Thursday, that they were occupying invaders. And I thought that the only way to be out past, this was past curfew, the only way to be out past curfew is if you were at a worship service or at a church. Um, and invaders is the Shell gas stations over here on Jefferson, the first in Jefferson, first in Jefferson. So, and past curfew, that's not a church. So they should have been arrested. So again, the laws do not apply to white people. They only apply to black people and those out here fighting for justice. I'm not just gonna say just black people. There's those that are out here fighting for justice, whether you white, brown, yellow, whatever you are, they are arresting you for standing with black people. 
How about the people partying at girls' schools at 2 o'clock in the morning in St. Matthews? Well, that's the East End. They, it's supposed to be countywide, as Andrea right. and everybody else has said, but evidently it's not. It's only... Don't, Protest, protest wide, protest. thank you. Hey, it's only protest That's wide. Right. It's only the protesters are being locked up. Uh, because as I also have a second job, I don't want to say where I work, but I also have a second job. We close at eight o'clock so that our employees can get home by nine. As I was leaving the restaurant where I work, it's not protest wide, we're still open with line with cars still in the drive through. When I left last night, about eight fifteen. Can you um can we get a spelling for Andrea's name, Andrea Anderson? A U N D R E A and A N D E R S O N. And and uh, a few more details about just so she was in the church on Thursday night, mm -hmm. and then and then they let us disperse. Okay. Yes. And then after that, she was arrested on. Yes, Monday. they said she could come back, get her belongings, and go back, and she got locked up on market. I think it was 25 people that got arrested last night. Um, what, did she, what did you say? I said that they, the police was trying to get a warrant so they could raid the church. Yeah, they were trying to get sanctuary. an ordinance to come in to raid the church uh, Thursday. Yes, they were trying to get an ordinance to raid the church. Also, on Wednesday, I'm also a teacher, and I have been meeting with city officials and LMPD, and I was asked weeks before the announcement if I would be here at the park the day of the announcement. So I spoke to my president, uh, JCTA, Brent McKim, and Dr. Polio, and he also contacted Dr. Polio, our superintendent, who allowed me to take a JCTA association. I was allowed that opportunity because I'm also an executive officer of our institution as well. So I was here, and I came back, and they started they started getting a little rough. We said we were gonna leave and we you know we left. I came back into the park before curfew because Dana Wooten and Tia Edison was cleaning up our area. So I came back to help them clean up. And the riot cops started marching from over here at Congress, uh, the sixth in Congress. And this older gentleman who was helping us said, I know for sure that they are not going to start the flashbangs and uh, what is it, the pepper balls? And I was like, I know they're not. They see us trying to clean up and pick up, and we were putting things in what it was. 806. Yeah, it was eight, yeah, 806. So they came, and yes, no sooner they got right here at 6th and Jefferson, here comes the, I guess it's pepper balls. I don't know if they were flashbangs. The flashbangs. Flashbangs and pepper balls, because I started coughing. And I said, yeah, I got to go. I can't take it. So as I was walking down 6th Street, I turned around and they're past Sixth and Cedar, past the unemployment office right here. And I turned around and I was like, they're still following us. I'm like, we're out of the park, but they're still following us. And I'm on my live. So I wasn't, you know, yelling at them or anything at, at that time. So <laughs> then he asked me to get on the sidewalk. I followed directions because as a teacher and as a mother, we teach our children to follow directions. So I got on the sidewalk and then he said something else and I just stopped him and was like, what did you say? but it was some other young man that was yelling behind me and he shot a pepper ball over right over my head and you can see it on my facebook live i'm getting i'm also in my car and as the co-chair of the kentucky alliance i'm not going to leave my members behind i had two members at seventh and muhammad ali i'm sitting in the parking lot at 8 38 waiting on them to to walk to where i am because i couldn't get around them because I didn't want to leave them behind for them to get attacked by LMPD because that's what they do. He told me to get in my car and shot a pepper bullet at my at my rental car that hit the door and it was it was a couple of inches from, from coming in to my window. It could have hit me in my head or in my neck. And yes, I am requesting an open records request. I want the body cam footage and I am pressing charges. All right. All right. All right. All right. Ms. Scott, you're a Kentucky State representative, so you're one of our lawmakers. Shamika Paris Wright is part of the Bell Project, who helps bail out protesters and others. So you're notable figures. Do you feel like LMPD is is deliberately targeting some of the lawmakers on the board, and did they target your arrest? I would say that it's clear that LMPD has 
I've been focusing on people who've been holding down this space at Injustice Square Park. I mean, they got Dana, they got Ms. Rhonda, um, they got Shamika with the Bell Project, they got Donnie Green with Feed Louisville, um, they got my daughter Shanti who's been doing her work as a young leader. And um, of course, I feel like there's some uh, retaliation against me for having the nerve to join on to a lawsuit with the ACLU of Kentucky against LMPD for that second night of protests on May 29th when they tear gassed us uh, and for filing Brianna's Law for Kentucky and working since I've been in the legislature uh, and when I served on Louisville Metro Council on police accountability. Yep, that's right. Yes. yes. Can we get a little more information about um, Atticus Law, the, the law to redefine or further define rioting charges? Does anyone have any information about that? Is she that's still Representative please? Wilner, but I think she I left. I think she's gone. Yeah. Also, we're going to work on the name. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. Also, it's Attica's law. Uh, they've been targeting uh, the medics as well. Um, oh, yeah. When I went to retrieve yeah, my can. property, every um, every um, medic did not get their badge back, their official badges. So, um, and it's been going on with the medics for a while, but that night, like, none, like the medics are getting locked up and they're not getting nothing back. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to mention that. Right. Yeah. Were you at the church last night? Yes. Uh, there were reports that um, there were only a few live streamers who were actually of the live during the course of the evening, and that someone was live streaming from inside the church against the wishes of the organizers, which was a breach of security. Do you have any comment on the, the value of live streaming right now in the movement? Um, yeah. Um, well, I didn't know too much about that. Um, I was actually hiding in my car because I have got arrested two days prior, and um, with the warrants, I think I might have been safer in, in the car. Um, but um, do you know who was live streaming? Okay. Well, we don't need to say. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to. Um, but yeah, we just gotta be um, just leery of like when the, you know organizers or people are hiding out because there are conversations that go on that we don't want to get out um, that jeopardize our safety. And I'll speak to that question and just say that uh, along with the medics, live streamers have been targeted as well. We all know that. That's right. And I'm very clear that if I was not on Instagram Live at the time of our arrest, um, some folks out here and some folks listening might actually have thought that we were trying to burn down the library. Right. Well, that's right. As if that was a possibility. But by the grace of God, I was yes. live streaming yeah, when we were arrested. No, we're and when we walked past the library, the window they claimed we broke out was very clearly intact. In fact, some folks asked if we could walk through the library and you hear me say, it's closed. We can't walk through the library. So um, live streamers, I'm not a live streamer. I'm somebody who said, let me go live because these LMPD and Alphabet Soup of Law Enforcement like to act a fool with us and bust our heads. So I'm gonna right. go live so everybody can see what's happening. Right. Um, but thank you to the folks who have been live streaming because it has made a difference. It has probably definitely kept some folks alive uh, in the face of people who do want to see us dead. Yes. Right. Yes. Also, the video it ended. Uh, it ended at eight fifty eight. If I may, like you said, you were live streaming it. But can you kind of touch on what happened after that live stream ended? Was there anything said to you? What happened throughout the rest of your life? Well, when the live stream ended, it was because an, an officer said he was trying to be as nice as he could, and he didn't want to break my phone, so I should put it away, so I guess I should be grateful. Um, <laughs> we were sat down on the sidewalk on 4th Street. We were there for about an hour um, as they were doing the initial processing and taking our pictures. Um, as I, I would imagine you all know, I just got over COVID-19, hallelujah, got my praise report, uh, not detected on Friday. and. Um, the officer was touching everyone's mask to take it down and I stopped him before he got to me and I said, you haven't used hand sanitizer once, so you will not be touching my mask. So he put on a glove. Um, they they yelled for their live streamer to come over and uh, live stream all of us sitting on the sidewalk. Uh, they've learned from us because uh, they got their own live streamer finally. Um, and then we were put into the police wagons and people at the church were yelling out for us to say who we were so that people were, would know who was getting arrested. Um, they also uh, viciously brutalized a man who lives in the 800 building, was on the 800 building property um, when he stepped out of the building and they viciously brutalized him. He wasn't even with protesters. 
Um, and then we were taken here to Louisville Metro Department of Corrections where there were National Guard inside. We're wasting a lot of money right now. Y'all folks need to be asking more questions about the money that's being wasted. Um, they just hanging out. Uh, and then we were processed inside of uh, the Department of Corrections. Um, at one point, I was put in isolation, separated uh, from everyone else because they know full well who I am and my position. And I said to them, I'm not concerned about anybody in this jail because folks who are inside know that I fight for and with them. Um, and then we, we sat for hours in a holding cell. Uh, our release papers have uh, a clear lie on them. They say we were rele released at 2.15 a.m. We were released at 8.13 in the morning. This whole system is guilty as hell. It's corrupt. Right. It's right. from the inside right. out. That's right. I have a question. For anyone there that was at the church yesterday, sorry. Uh, anyone that was at the church yesterday, uh, how did you feel about the one of the live streamers had uh, asked the question to police officers and they indicated that the police officers were in search of uh, individuals that had uh, the, the riders that broke the window that spalding and set the car on fire, outside agitators that had broke the windows. Does anybody have a comment on that? They, they said that the protesters had already kicked them out of the church yeah, and the police officers uh, were still Yeah, they the kicked them like, like three times and tried to get them away from the, the safe spot because we're very protective of this memorial and any sanctuary. Um, so we don't want them bringing that. So those were definitely outsiders. We, we don't we don't do that. That's why we made it this long. If we wasn't this peaceful, it, it would this would not still be here. We still we'll still not be out here occupying this safe spot as well. What would your direct message be to some of those outside agitators who, you know, along oh, yes. with the don't cars. try it. Don't try it. Don't try the fireworks because we are all security as well. Kids, every single body. So you're gonna have over 100 people looking at you. So even a water bottle, we don't play around. Nothing. That causes, that can cause, uh, that puts people's lives in danger. And I had one of uh, one of our young adults who have been out here with us for over 120 days came to me and uh, told me about what happened. I was not out yesterday uh, or last night. And normally I am. I leave work and I come. But yesterday I was just exhausted and I just couldn't. Uh, so. He told me that they, they, they put over 300 people's lives in danger. So we don't want you, if you're coming down here to agitate and cause problems, you want to set fires, you want to uh, burn up buildings or sh throw water bottles or firecrackers, we don't want you around us because that can cause police officers to start shooting and innocent people can get hurt. Right, right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Mr. Brad Harrison, hey. we on State Raps Live. Are you a co-sponsor, a community co-sponsor of Brianna's Live? Am I community co-sponsor? I am. Yeah, see, look at that. <laughs> Brad Harrison, where can we find you? Uh, find me at, uh, you can find me at Brad Harrison on Facebook, at Brad the Journalist on Instagram, and Urban Voices Radio on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining.